For many centuries, we used to live in darkness. We were guided by blind faith and superstition. We didn't know why things happened, we just assumed that they happened for a reason. Then, 236 years ago, the German philosopher Immanuel Kant called upon us to think for ourselves. Sapere aude, he said, to use his Latin words. In English, dare to know. For Kant, the courage to use our own understanding was the essence of the so-called enlightenment. In the Western world, the enlightenment meant that people increasingly liberated themselves from churches and other authorities like kings that until then had dictated their lives. We started to explore the world and we made sense of it by means of science. We took control over our lives. We became smarter and more powerful. And we used technology as a means to extend that power. We created machines that were stronger, faster, and eventually smarter than us. And that's where we are today. It seems like we have become tired of our own human intelligence. Or why else would we be so obsessed with creating artificial intelligence? There are countless definitions of AI. I am here going to focus on the following aspect. AI is a system that has the capacity to partially or entirely automate human decision-making. So by building AI, we are building something that can make decisions on our behalf. But how can we be free when we delegate our decisions? The ability to make our own decisions is what brought us here in the first place. We started our road to freedom with the Enlightenment. Does AI mean the end of it? Let's take COVID-19 in order to illustrate how much hope we put into AI, but also how AI plays with our freedom. The breakout of the pandemic in early 2020 was the first time for many of us that we had our freedom severely restricted. And it felt very surreal. But very soon, a particular glimmer of hope was directed towards AI. What could artificial intelligence do to resolve the crisis? Couldn't AI somehow save us from this awful virus? A significant amount of money has been invested into AI as a means to beat or mitigate the pandemic and for effectively giving us back our freedom. For many researchers and tech companies, COVID-19 is the ideal stage to show what AI is capable of. AI can track and predict the spread of the virus with great accuracy. AI significantly accelerates the development of a vaccine. AI is used in thermal scanners that identify people with fever. And some hospitals use AI to predict which corona patients are likely to need a transfer to the intensive care unit or who will die. But wait, do we really want to have AI decide who should get a life-saving treatment? Is this still liberating? If we only see AI as a savior, we blind out the fact that it oscillates between promoting freedom on the one hand and oppression on the other hand. AI can be both liberating and oppressive. Let's look at this ambiguity. AI relieves us. We are all sometimes overwhelmed by the amount of choices we face in our lives. And most of them are by no means existential, but they eat away our time. I'm talking about silly stuff like what to watch on Netflix, what to stream on Spotify, what book to order from Amazon. All these giant online providers make recommendations that are generated with the help of AI. And I must admit, I find them quite helpful because they basically keep me entertained without me having to make any decision. And that's quite convenient, isn't it? 
AI also enables and empowers us. AI holds particularly great potential when as many people as possible have access to it and can afford it. Think of AI in healthcare. If we have AI that can reliably and correctly interpret MRI scans, we can delegate part of what doctors do to artificial intelligence. Ideally, this means lower barriers to access and more affordable diagnostics. This, then, is enabling and empowering. But, as I said, automating our decisions with the help of AI also causes problems. It restricts our freedom. AI patronizes us. Let's talk about navigation systems. We let them dictate our ways. And when they fail, we fail. Think of cars that are stranded on cow pastures because they were misguided by GPS. Quite funny pictures, aren't they? But on a much more serious note, in 2018 and 2019, two Boeing 737 MAX planes crashed. A total of 346 people were killed. Both crashes were linked to software malfunctions that made it impossible for the pilots to control the plane. They were simply not allowed to make decisions anymore. Their human competence was replaced by automated decision-making. This is not a matter of restricting our freedom anymore. This is a matter of life and death. AI also monitors us, or it spies on us. In order to make reliable decisions on our behalf, AI needs to gather tons of data, and we need to share that data. We cannot automate our decisions if we are not re willing to reveal some of our habits. During lockdown, there was a sudden boom in AI-based software that monitors employees in their home offices. Such software allows employers to keep track of what their employees are typing, or it takes screenshots, or it just checks how long an app remains idle. To be honest, I'd probably be fired on the very first day if this type of surveillance was ever used on me, and I'd be angry. I don't want to be judged by a software that knows nothing about my specific style of working. And I don't want a software to evaluate my productivity based on how often I go to the toilet. So using AI to automate our decisions can be quite helpful or convenient, as I said, when it comes to trivial lifestyle decisions. But it becomes a problem when other people use AI to automate their decisions on my behalf. That is, when important decisions are made about me, but without me. Put differently, judging by using AI is very different from being judged by others based on AI. If I apply for a job or a mortgage or a bail, do I want the employer, the landlord or the judge to rely, rely on AI for their decisions? Artificial intelligence does not know me. Okay, neither does the employer, the judge, or the landlord. But artificial intelligence cannot tell whether I, Dorothea, am suitable for that job, that home, or that bail. It cannot look at me, and I cannot talk back to it. AI can only tell whether people with similar characteristics like me are suitable. And it does so based mostly on statistical probabilities. But I don't want to be processed through a black box of code that cannot answer my questions, has zero to little accountability, and no empathy or common sense. So, it seems like the same intellectual movement that is the Enlightenment that has called upon us to think for ourselves might be the reason why we stop thinking for ourselves. We gained all that freedom, but if we delegate 
that freedom to machines now, we need to ask ourselves, are we really still masters or are we servants? Are we leaving the enlightenment behind and are we entering another age of darkness? The conclusions of AI are sometimes hard to understand. We cannot always explain how artificial intelligence arrives at its decisions. We used to say, the ways of the Lord are inscrutable. So are the ways of AI. Or God is a black box. So is AI. In the Dark Ages, we used to not think for ourselves. We lived at the mercy of churches and kings. Then we gained all that freedom through the Enlightenment. And if we need to keep that freedom, we need to remain enlightened. And this means that we have to outsmart tech rather than outsmarting ourselves. Because in the last instance, our freedom must always come from within us and never from artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is our servant. We are the masters.